coming up on this episode. Today we are looking at collective investment schemes. It is almost like a welfare group but being managed collectively and being managed by a professional manager. How does the investment manager know what my profile is, what I want to be able to invest in, whether I should go for risk or not. So we have tools that profile you. So we'll ask you, what is your age? I am 27 years old and I've saved 50,000 shillings. Where would you recommend that I begin where investing is concerned? Obviously, collective investment scheme is the destination. People have got opportunities to grow. They should not restrict themselves just in the private sector. There's public sector as well. Welcome to the Isifa Investment Show. I am so pleased to have you here. My name is Rena Hicks and I'm the Operations Director at FIDA Investment Bank. And we are here to showcase uh, opportunities, investment opportunities that are available in this market and professionals that you can reach out to confidently so that you can get the help that you need to grow your wealth. Today we are looking at collective investment schemes. And I am so thrilled to be joined by Elizabeth Irungu. Welcome, Elizabeth. Thank you very much. It's so wonderful to have you here. My pleasure. Elizabeth is a chartered financial analyst, CFA. She's a general manager, uh, business development and client relations at ICEA Asset Management. Elizabeth has been in the industry for over 15 years and she specializes in being able to help people choose investment products that are aligned to their goals and to their needs. And today I'm so happy to have her because we have a shared passion. <laughs> sure, yes. Yes, we are so passionate about helping people become financially literate and manage their finances and invest and not just sort of go through life. So thank you for being here. Asante Sana. Yeah. It's a pleasure. Yeah, and uh, we really want to just discuss what, what are collective investment schemes. Maybe let's start from there and then mm -hmm. we'll go into the detail of, of Excellent. The Good one. I think just for a starter, a collective investment scheme, just like you have said it, it's basically collective because it pulls together money from different people, uh, from different places, and puts you together as one large, large people with a lot of money, those with small money, you come together and you know the power of many. And then your investment manager, who is a professional, goes ahead and invests for you according to your investment style. So case in point, if it is a money market fund, we are saying these are investors who are looking for low risk investment. They are looking for capital preservation. They are looking for liquidity. Is it money that they can get back really quickly, almost equivalent to their current account, bank, bank accounts. Mm -hmm. And when they come together with their a lot of money and there are many, what the manager will do is that they will go and select uh, suitable instruments that, are, that, that can meet those objectives and they invest together and they get a return on top of their funds that they have invested. So really nice that it is almost like a welfare group, but being managed collectively and being managed by a professional manager. Really exciting. Okay. Yes. So how does the investment manager know what my profile is, what I want to be able to invest in, whether I should go for risk or not? Mm -hmm. How do they do that analysis? All right. So when every client is coming on board, what we will do as your fund managers is that we sit down with you and we do a client profiling. So we have tools that profile you. So we'll ask you, what is your age? And you give us your age. Uh, what exactly do you want to achieve with your investment? And you tell us, this is money for my school fees, or this is money for my retirement, or this is money for my project that I'll be starting next year. You'll give us the objective. Then we ask you, how would you react if, for example, we invested your monies and after one month you came and, we, and you found that you invested a thousand shillings, the value of your portfolio is maybe a hundred and, uh, I mean, let's say uh, 900 shillings. Mm. What kind of panic? And we like going to the downside because that is where people panic. Yeah. Upside, there's nobody who doesn't like the upside. <laughs> we all celebrate. I mean, money upside is, is never an issue. It's until when they see their portfolio valuation has come down. Yeah. So if they're 
answer is I never want to see my money go down then we know obviously you're a low risk person and then also the other thing that the manager will do is when they ask you the question about your age they're trying to identify do you have even the ability because there is willingness but then, then ability can also be very different willingness to take risk is I go to my manager and I say I want to make the highest return yeah. then I ask you how old are you and or even when you're coming you're an octogenarian and I'll tell you You've got the willingness, but you do not have. We cannot yeah. do this. This at your age, you can't be able to take the risk that you're asking us to do because maybe you're approaching your retirement. Mm -hmm. We need to be preserving your capital more than taking risk. But a young guy comes to my office and talks about being conservative. I definitely want to talk to them about a bit the ability they have, the life and the the time to actually take the active risk, risk, a bit of active risk, mm -hmm. and gain much more. So your age is a very important parameter when we are profiling you. The other thing that we profile uh, our clients on is their tax status. There are people who are benefiting from tax exemptions from the government. It is important for them to know that there are tax instruments that or the instruments that can and them better because of their tax status. And if you're also taxable, mm -hmm. there are instruments that are better for you, for you to invest in because they give you tax exemption. So that's very important because the manager takes all this information and uses it to create a portfolio that is suitable for all these clients who are coming on board. And then most importantly, we ask you about liquidity. How soon would you like to get back this money? Mm -hmm. Is this money that maybe you can wake up with your emergency fund and when you call on it, you need it there and then. So your liquidity needs are very, very important to us because they inform what kind of instrument I can buy. So if your liquidity needs are high, what that means to a manager is that they've got to invest in instruments that are liquid and are tradable and easy to transact in the uh, capital markets. They will not go to, cap to assets which are long-term like let's say, a property, because we know it takes a lengthy uh, process mm -hmm. to liquidate a property as much as it's a good investment. Mm -hmm. So clients with similar objectives and around all these parameters, we will fall to a similar collective investment scheme. Uh, yeah, so there will be different types of collective investment schemes and all are tailored towards a certain goal and a certain objective and risk parameter. Okay, yeah. so let's go there next. The different types that exist. Sure. Um, because many people know, only sort of know about money market funds, uh -huh. um, but there are also many who don't know what those are. So let's just go through what are the different types of these collective investment schemes. All right. So like I said, collective investment schemes basically give you the chance to invest with others mm. and earn the benefit of being in a large portfolio. Mm. So the choice is quite wide. It's almost like a buffet, that's what I would say. So I'll go uh, you know, systematically one by one and try to explain what each one of the uh, money market funds that we have, especially in our industry, or our collective investment schemes that we have in our industry, what each of them sort of are tailored towards. Mm. So let's start with the low risk one, which is what many Kenyans love, the money market fund. So a money market fund is a fund that seeks to preserve your capital and seeks to mirror your current account in the bank, but with a benefit that you earn interest on your money. Okay, Maybe so preserving your capital means you'll not lose you're what you not, put in. What you put in, what you come with, we first of all work very hard to keep it. Mm. Then on top of that, you earn an interest on top. So a money market fund will be structured for such people who are looking to, uh, to really uh, keep their money first of all safe, most safe, mm -hmm. and then uh, earn a return on top of it. And at the same time, there are also individuals or corporates or investors who are looking at accessibility of their funds whenever they want it. Okay. So they don't want to be locked. They don't want to be told you are locked for three years. Mm -hmm. They want, I have put my money last month, I have a need today, can I access it out and deal with my issues? So it's quite a fluid or liquid fund mm. and accessible to uh, uh, to the investors who are who, who have invested in it. The other thing about the money market fund is that it does not have front loaded fees. What does so that mean? That means when you're coming in, the manager does not charge you a fee. So you bring in a hundred shillings, your statement will read one hundred shillings. Funds that have upfront fees mm. or joining fees, it means when you come with a hundred shillings and maybe there's an upfront fee of one percent, we credit your statement with ninety-nine shillings. Mm. One shilling is a fee. 
So you already start on the with a lower amount. Mm. So money market funds do not have initial fees or front-loaded fees. Okay. They only have a manage an annual management fee. The other thing about money market fund is they distribute or they calculate your interest on a daily basis. What that does to you is uh, that every investor gets to accrue their interest every day and even if you're going to leave in the middle of the month because we said it's liquid, yeah. your 15 days that you had accrued, no penalties. Mm. Amazing. If you compare that with a bank yeah. uh, deposit. Let's compare it with like a fixed deposit account. Yes, when you compare with a fixed deposit, yeah. a fixed deposit you must first of all tell the bank, I want to fix for three months. If you come in between these three months and try to access your money, mm. sure you will access the money, but the bank will tell you at a cost we will slap you with a penalty. Either the whole interest will not be credited mm. or maybe partially they'll take away the interest that you are supposed to accrue. So you find that a money market fund has that benefit. No penalties accrue to members when they are living and they don't need to give us notice that they are coming for their money. So that's money market fund. Are you comfortable with that? Yeah, what average rates would you say are in the market for money market funds? Okay, so the average rates in the market for money market funds, they go by the invest underlying investments that the managers have taken. So because we are many managers, quote unquote, mm. <laughs> we are several <laughs> managers in this space, you find that your money market fund will earn you um, between 5% and 10%. And all this means different managers have different styles of selecting the instruments they have invested in. So for you as an investor, what you need to know is that uh, the manager is taking some risk with the money and always remember the fundamental rule of investing, the higher the return, the higher the risk. Mm. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So now, we, we, you know, I was just wondering about penetration. Uh -huh. Um, you know, but before we go into penetration, perhaps what we can do is just find out what the other types the are. Other. So we've done the money, money market, market fund. Mm -hmm. What other the funds are existing? Good. So in the market, we have different people with different needs. So the other market fund that they can choose is, for example, young people or any individual or corporate who wants to invest in the exchange. Mm -hmm but they don't know how to select which security to buy, which company to buy. Oh, you mean like the stock exchange? The stock, stock exchange. exchange. Mm. Now, if you're that type who are looking for exposure into the stock exchange, we've got you covered. We have collective investment schemes that are tailored to invest particularly in the East African market. Mm. So they buy shares in the market and everything they do, the manager does, is to select the best shares or stocks in the market for these underlying investors in what we call equity fund. Mm -hmm. So an equity fund will seek to grow your wealth. It is for capital growth. The reason we say that is because an equity fund will always seek to multiply the wealth. Uh, and we know shares, how they grow. You start at five shillings and the share can rise all the way 50 and you can see the kind of multiplications mm. unlike other asset classes but don't forget in the same breath a share price can come from 100 and go all the way down to 20 shillings right. so an equity fund we will say is what a manager will define as a high risk fund and this risk is basically to describe the movement of prices that the volatility of prices we will have to face as an investor because uh, when COVID hit, for example, share prices just dropped because of the panic in the market and because of the disruption in the market, uh, whether it is trade or even how we were doing business. Mm -hmm. So you find that an equity fund therefore suffered the most. And if you are an investor there, the previous month, February of 2020, your equity fund was doing well. March of 2020, when you were closing, the price are, prices are really come down and so you find you came from here and you dropped pop. But that doesn't mean we remain there. So the investors get um, that volatility, so they've got to know how they can ride along that and still ride there, trade upward, because the trade will most likely be upward. Your manager will try to really work hard to manage those volatilities, but it is true that maybe at the point where you really need the money, you find that the market is down. 
So you came in with a million shillings mm. and your valuation is maybe 900,000. But if you have the ability to stay on, prices will rise again. And we have seen that in uh, severally in our own country. So those are the things you need to know about an equity fund. And a manager really works hard to select the best, but faces market risk. So, so in, an, in an industry where we have several asset management companies, mm -hmm. how can you, if let's say, for example, you're looking to invest in an equity fund, yes. how do you compare the different managers and how they've performed? Is that information available? Yes, that is public information. Uh, managers are required to provide you with the financial statements of the funds that you are about to buy, okay. you should be able to see every security that that manager holds. They also, we are also supposed to provide you with a fact sheet every month describing our strategy, what we are doing about the fund, showing the asset allocation and the securities that the manager has, uh, has bought, and also showing the performance of the fund. So if you are starting at the beginning and you are doing your research around which manager to go to, the first thing you could ask is, share with me mm. the fact sheet of your fund. The fact sheet will tell you the size of the fund, mm. when the fund was started, the performance, including historical performance of the fund. It will also tell you the service providers behind it. And of course, that important detail that you need so that you can compare different funds. Okay, Yes. awesome. So we've looked at money market funds and equity and funds. Equity funds. Uh -huh. yes. The next one? The next one we look at is what we call a balanced fund. And like the name suggests, why it is called a balanced fund, <laughs> you know jargon in finance, mm. we, we don't know how to use simple words, <laughs> balanced. It sounds like a, something else. But a balanced fund basically says mm. it's got a mix of assets. Okay. It has equities, mm -hmm. it has fixed income mixed together. So, and it could also have some investments, maybe in a REIT, it could have okay. investments in some corporate bonds. So it's a mix of assets. And what that does me means is that it's more diversified. It doesn't invest, this fund does not invest in one particular asset class. It, 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 it invests in different asset classes and what different asset classes do is they reduce the risk. Mm -hmm. Diversification uh, means that all our eggs are not in one basket, yes. they're in different baskets. So if for example equities are not doing well, your corporate bonds could be doing well and so you find the, the balance now comes in. Mm -hmm. Whatever is not working is being supported by what is working. If your fixed income is not doing too well, maybe equities are doing well and so the balance is always there and that is where maybe our um, ancestors got this balance fad, you know, idea that it's always, since assets don't uh, react to uh, information the same way, you find that a balanced fund, because of the diversity of instruments that are in there, it gets that balance mm -hmm. in, at any one time. It doesn't expose you to one extreme of one asset class or the other. Okay. So now I just wanted to understand, okay, so we have all these fantastic investment opportunities, uh -huh. but it sounds to me, because I'm in the market and I, you know, it, it, I get the sense, I've not done any research, but I get the sense that penetration in terms of number of people who are investing in these products is very low. Can you give us a sense of what that looks like at the moment? Sure. It is a worrying number. It's worrying. It is worrying. Now, the truth of the matter is many Kenyans do not know about collective investment scheme, despite the fact that the first collective investment scheme, I think, was established in 2003 or something like that. But you find the total number of active collective investment schemes in this country are less than 200,000. Investors? Investors. 200,000? 200, 200, in a population of how many adults? Oh my gosh. Yeah. 30 million Maybe 30 million, yeah. Including the 18-year-olds? Yes. About 30 million? It is a shame for our nation. So we are working very hard to make sure that we get the message out and i'm so glad that this information is also being propelled by uh, organizations like isifa we are doing exactly that mm. so as many kenyans as they hear this message if they can come on board we definitely can increase the savings rate the investment rate and of course propel the nation it goes to a bigger advantage because the managers invest back into the economy and that means 
even our GDP will grow. So mm -hmm. it has a bigger macro effect. Uh, personal gains, macro gains, it's, we the benefits benefit. are, I mean, they are really big, yeah. The other question I have is in terms of the accessibility. Okay, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. sometimes people are like, ah, that one, the I can't process. invest. It's first process to minimum investment amount is high. So maybe you can speak to that with the different investment options, the five yeah. of them you've mentioned. Yes. What are the minimums for each of them? At least those ones have been sorted, Rina. Mm -hmm. Nobody can argue that they have not bought uh, their collective investment scheme because they really cannot afford it. Okay. Their minimums have come down significantly. So you find that there are col some collective investment schemes that are as low as 50 shillings. 50? Yes, you can invest 100 shillings, you can mm -hmm. start. So it just, the discipline is everything. You okay. see, now that one is personal. When the discipline is, has everything to do with the person, where you start with 500, we don't want you stuck at 500 mm -hmm. or 50, but we want you consistently putting money. So that element of minimums has been uh, reduced. It's democratized. Now, the other thing you asked is about accessibility. You are aware that if we were to draw the map of Kenya and the counties uh, and ask how many managers are outside the county 47. Yeah. We are all concentrated in county 47, <laughs> maybe with a few agents. That's a sad bit. However, technology has come and has broken the barriers. So a number of us managers have already embraced technology, right. allowing anybody, wherever they are, any Kenyan, wherever you are, you can be able to buy your collective investment scheme either on your phone, USSD, and make your payment, access your money back, and you really don't need to move an inch from the comfort of your home. So there's no more excuse around, I've got to travel all the way to Nairobi to look for a manager. It would be nice for me to see you, but you really don't need to. So you can go to our online portals, different managers have online portals, then you can be able to buy your collective and start investing. And you get the same information, the same returns as anybody who is Nairobi. So this is not a preserve for the Nairobians, it's now been democratized, opened by technology, and anybody can access it. So take advantage of that. Um, make use of your mobile phone because it is also a transacting tool. Yes. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. That was so helpful, and I've learned a lot, despite the fact that I'm in an industry <laughs> as well. So guys, we move to our really fun segment, which is you asking questions. I'm 27 years old and I've saved 50,000 shillings. I don't have any investments. Where do you recommend that I, where, where would you recommend that I begin where investing is concerned? All right. Obviously, collective investment scheme is the destination because of the size of the amount you have. The choice of the fund that you can choose, I would say, based on your age, I would advise you start investing in the equity fund because of your age. You've got the ability to ride the markets and enjoy capital gains over the long term because I'm assuming that you're going to invest this money for the long haul and not short term. So equity fund would be your destination. Quick question just to add on to that. Why invest in the collective investment scheme as in equity funds as opposed to buying Equities. stocks directly? You have the benefit of the manager making professional decisions for you as you concentrate with your core duties. So here you're getting to buy the services of a professional manager to run your portfolio as small as it is. What are the benefits? It's not cheap to get a manager, but in a collective investment scheme, the manager works for you. So your 50,000 will, will be under the hands of a professional manager. Quite interesting. And also the expense ratio is not so high to deter you from investing. And the research you get from a manager and paralleled. Okay. Yeah. Expense ratio for those who have not invested in this. Um, uh, expenses that for running a fund, they range between two percent and three percent. Is it negotiable? No. Collective investment schemes are run through a trust deed and rules, and those trust deeds have already been signed off by the trustees, 
And so we can't allow thousands of people to come and negotiate. Mm. So you just have to uh, agree to the terms and conditions. Okay. So those are the management fees? Absolutely. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, Susan, that's the answer to your question. Next up, we are interviewing an FA financial analyst who's been here for a long, long time so that we can just get to know who they are and be inspired by their journey. Here you go. My name is Lazarus Kimanga and um, uh, currently, I should say, I am the chair of registration committee of the Institute of Certified Investment and Financial Analysts. Um, I can say that a uh, long time ago, uh, that is more than 10 years, uh, 20 years ago, uh, we started an institute called Associate of Financial Analysts. And um, uh, since then, uh, you know, it's been some time, but we've been fighting over time to try and see if we could have an act uh, of parliament in order to regulate the financial analyst sector. Uh, so it took quite a while, but uh, good luck. Uh, come 20, 20, 2015, eventually we had an act in place. So, and uh, we have now an institute, uh, ISIFA, which is quite strong and um, you know uh, and and looking after uh, the investment and financial analysts uh, in, the, in the in the the country in in my in, in my life i have always dealt with investments um, i was a general manager of uh, um, uh, east africa re for a long time. And um, as an our insurance company, uh, investments is one of the key areas of growth for, for the company. And um, that uh, uh, investment management was under my, my role, and uh, one of the roles. And therefore, I found it very, very useful indeed over time. And um, I enjoyed it so much because it was helping me to make a difference in that company. And um, you can be sure that there was always growth in investments in that company. And um, for all the years I was in East Africa, uh, you know, uh, still investments remained under my, my role uh, because of the, you know, the sort of um, input or, or, or role that I was playing in that company. So it has been very, very useful as a person uh, because it also helped me to see the company grow. Um, yeah, it's something that I have really enjoyed over time. Yes. When it comes to career growth for a young professional uh, and a CIFA graduate, it is very, very important to make sure that that person is, has got a lot of integrity that person must be of high integrity because that is what now people are looking for. Um, and again, to be a member of the Institute in good standing, if you've got to make an impact in your life as a young person. So uh, as you grow um, as an invest investment and financial analyst, you need to make sure that at least there are certain values that must be in you. And that should come out well for the employers. And if you take integrity as one of the things, professionalism, uh, you know, and making sure that, you know, there's excellence in your work, you can always grow as, 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 a, as, as a professional in that area. So those are some of the things that you need to do. And also to make sure that you do not really think that it is only uh, the private sector that can give you the job. Now government is opening up. Uh, they have realized the importance, particularly since we have this act in, in the place. They've realized the importance of having, uh, you know, um, CIFA members becoming, uh, you know, um, uh, senior persons in government in terms of advising 
you know, uh, investment, investment management, in investment management, and they, they are doing very well. And quite recently, we saw uh, a situation where the Director General Investments in, in Treasury saying that he needed more than 30 graduates of ISIFA to give uh, them jobs in government. That tells you that, in fact, people have got, you know, uh, opportunities to grow. The young people have got opportunities. They should not restrict themselves just in the private sector. There's public sector as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so long as they make sure that the values that people look at as an employee, they have them and they actually conform to them. That's, that's the most important. Yes, um, one quote that I learned a long time ago, and uh, this is from, um, you know, a chairman of mine many years ago, uh, who used to be chairman of Barclays, and his name was uh, 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 JDM Sylvester. And um, each time, you know, I used to be common secretary, and uh, I bought that he was chairman, and uh, he would tell me after we have discussed uh, Lazarus, I hope at the end of the year uh, you will remember that there will be a fee note. Then I would ask him, a fee note for what? Uh, yes, each time we talk, we really talk and you know about the company, etc. And now it's good. And I'm seeing the company is growing. Just to know that there's nothing for nothing. So um, he did tell me that always, when you are, uh, you know, um, when you are talking to people, or you want some service, just know on the other side that this you value it, you should value it. Not necessarily that you cannot give, you know, uh, not your service to be paid for, but just be sure that they are, you value the service that you get from the other people. So uh, since then, that has always remained in my mind. I, I know it's no longer there, but uh, he re I really learned a lot that just know that there is nothing for nothing. If you've got investments, don't put investments not expecting, of course, uh, you expect something. And if you are investing on behalf of other people, just know that that, that investment you've gotten, in order for you to invest for them, it is not there for nothing. They expect a return. Yes, I think uh, in uh, my life, I think I found uh, myself doing, uh, other than the usual work that, uh, you know, pays me for a living, um, I've always enjoyed, as I said, you know, giving free service to humanity, giving a, pro a service on pro bono. And uh, this has worked out very well for me. Somehow I enjoy it and somehow I enjoy giving that service when I'm involved in that service than the service that I you know, I give in order to get pay. And this is very true, it's not just the same, because um, I do not ask myself, when I do this, do I, am I paid enough uh, when I do, uh, you know, uh, service for humanity? And I always create time. It's a question of time management. And um, the other things that uh, I do is, uh, uh, I work a lot at uh, Chaffer's Club in uh, Lavington. Uh, you know, there's a good field uh, which is there. And uh, I it's spend time also, I'm a fan of, uh, you know, football, particularly Man U. It's, 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 a, it's, it's a team that I like so much for many years. And uh, also, I, I'm keen in golf, but after some time, I went off. That absence cost me a bit, but I'm now back again. So those are some of the things that, that I do. Uh, it's, I think, more to do with, uh, you know, um, uh, time management, and you can still make it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it for this episode. We've been talking to Elizabeth Irungu, she's a CFA, a Chartered Financial Analyst, and we have been looking at what collective investment schemes are. Guys, there's so many opportunities for you to invest. Let not lack of knowledge be an excuse. We have, are here to give you information on investment opportunities and professionals that you can reach out to. So please subscribe, hit the subscribe button, and share this video so that others can also learn. Take care. 
Next week on the show, we discuss investing in real estate with F.A. David Luigi. <laughs>